So, I'm um, an unapologetic, unapologetic industrialist, and uh, in some ways, I guess, I've been through a, 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 an experience not dissimilar to yours in terms of having to, to change because of the pressures of, on uh, my organisation. I've heard the term ecosystem when talking about the market pressures on you guys. I've heard the term devolution. And I'm here today to talk about self-management. And in many ways, they're, they're connected things. It's all about pushing decision-making and leadership down into the body of an organisation rather than holding it within a hierarchy, within a hierarchy, within a command and control system. Why do you want to do it? Well, it, it's cheaper, it's more productive, it's more efficient. In many ways, that, that kind of seems a radical idea, but I'm talking about the difference here between traffic lights and roundabouts. Traffic lights are command and control, you do what you're told. Roundabouts, there's a structure which you fit in and you self-manage. The central difference I'm talking about are things we're super familiar with as uh, that are super familiar to us in our everyday lives. Like the scariest thing in the English language is the phrase, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> I've heard this conversation before 20 years ago in the aerospace industry when I was engaged in, I was volunteered for a lean manufacturing program. And I, I'm, Lean is a, is a Japanese um, uh, manufacturing technology for reducing waste and the aerospace industry was fantastically wasteful and the, uh, the government saw it as a strategic element in our economy so they wanted to transform it. So they implied, Im imposed lean upon us. So for me, lean was a complete disaster. It was the, it was the start of our journey discovering why it was a complete disaster that led us to devolve our organisation in, in such a radical way. But Lean is about reducing waste. Lean is about getting more from less, making your budget go further. The principles of Lean are cutting out waste. Clearly, if you remove the things that are wasteful, it makes the job easier and more productive, more efficient. Kind of a message that's easy to sell, but in practice, it didn't work. In practice for us, the cost of lean, the cost of the program, and the results we got were actually more expensive than the program was, and the whole program was demotivating and a distraction. It never delivered cost savings to the bottom line, even though that's primarily what it was there to do. And some of you may have the experience of cost cutting that is being sold to you as an improvement in efficiency and things will get better. But the reality is the experience is it actually increases the pressure, you're actually delivering less for less because the wastes are inherent in the structures of your organisation and they're not inherent in the operations of it. Our problem with Lean was not with any of the tools of Lean. All the tools of Lean were fantastic, useful tools that you can't really argue with, but somehow you feel trapped in it because whilst you can't argue, whilst you can't push back on the Lean programme, the cost-cutting programme, these area reviews which are going to identify ways for you to cut your costs. One of our big lessons in our Lean programme was that when we did continuous improvement, we found some of the things we'd done previously, they kind of deteriorated and they went back to the way they used to be. The efficiencies we put in place were lost. In lean, they call that the grass growing back. And in continuous improvement, you go on to the next program, you do the next, bring in the next tool and make the next change in the next cost-saving measure. 
But this is not a series of separate tools. This becomes actually the first tool you have to go back to and repair and get back, you cut the grass, get it back on track. Then you have to <clears throat> impose the, 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 the new tool, the tool for today, which eventually is going to grow back. And now you've got two tools to maintain. And then tomorrow you're going to put a third tool in. That's what continuous improvement's all about. It never stops. Our realization, our moment of epiphany was when we looked at those programs where the grass had grown back, it was a very strange phenomenon we observed. We, we had this issue and we pushed it and we improved it and we strolled to change the behaviors of the people on the ground. And we got a new behavior that was, which was more efficient. And then we pushed another program and another department and another group. And we got change on the ground. And when we went back to the first group, they'd come back here again. They'd somehow magically not just grown back, not just, re not just become more inefficient, but actually became inefficient in exactly the same way they were previously inefficient. It was a very directed return to a specific sort of inefficiency. It was like there was some magnetic attraction to this particular type of dysfunction. And that got us thinking. Why is it we're always pushing away from this point? What was the attraction of this particular dysfunction? Why are we wasting these things? So our leadership challenge was to try to identify what was, what was bringing people back to this wastefulness. And our realization was it was our structures. This was a sweet spot. And all we were doing by introducing these tools, these cost-cutting measures, is we were pushing people away from their sweet spot. We were asking them to do perhaps two jobs instead of one. We were asking them to do, take more responsibility and cut their budget. And inevitably, our structures that were in place that never changed brought people back to the sweet spot and the inefficiencies and the waste they originally had. But to focus on the structures which dictate where your sweet spots are. If you move your sweet spots, your behaviours will shift along those same lines. If you make it better to be more efficient, people will be more efficient. If you've got a traffic light junction, there's no point in just taking traffic lights out thinking you're going to cut costs. You have to replace your traffic light junction with a different structure called a roundabout. And it'll flow more traffic, it's more efficient, has less accidents because of the structure not because of how you're trying to persuade the drivers to behave. It's just structures, and that's the primary role of leadership. It's more efficient, and it's lower cost. You're devolving responsibility for the day-to-day decision-making down into the organization so that the leadership is focused si simply on the strategic decision making and even that can be contained by the group who themselves are responsible for the day to day decision making so in other words decision making day to day at the coal face and together they can look at those wider longer term decision making uh, policies and programs they want to engage in so I say collaborate I say change your structures how? What? I don't know. I'm an industrialist. I know that it's possible. I know it can work. I know roundabouts work and they're better than traffic lights. Next time you're stopped at a traffic light in the middle of the night and there's no cars around except you're just sat there stationary, think why, if this was a roundabout, I wouldn't be stationary. That's how your organization is. It just has wasteful management. Devolution. Ecosystems, all a, they all have one characteristic in common, and they devolve decision-making into the body of the, of the, of the community.